The electric field, uh, what, first I'd like to review uh, gravity fields and show you how, you know, <clears throat> we already have dealt with uh, force fields before. We talked about uh, gravitational fields. And we'll show that we're going to use Coulomb's law to um, uh, define uh, what, you know, the electric field is for test charges and point charges. And then we'll talk about the superposition uh, principle uh, for electric fields. And uh, this isn't, this really isn't too bad. Now, uh, recall <coughs> the force of gravity from mechanics was equal to G times the mass of one object times the mass of the other object over R squared. Remember, this was a constant of nature. This kind of described how strong gravity is in our universe. And then these are the two masses. This is how far apart they are. And then we have, to make this a vector, we have to give it a negative r hat direction. OK. Um, now, <clears throat> this was uh, the force of gravity. Uh, but the force of gravity, we said, was equal to m. We'll make this the, the little m that's in common here, m times g. And g is really what we called you know, the acceleration of gravity, but we all can also think of it as a gravitational field. And that this mass right here, this was, a, you can kind of think of it as a test mass. It's a little chunk of mass that we're going to use to test the gravitational field around a planet or a star or something. And so what we did was we divided this gravitational field. We said that G was equal to the force of gravity divided by this test mass. Um, and the units we got here were newtons per kilogram. OK, now a newton per kilogram, yeah, that, <clears throat> that cancels out to be meters per second squared. So if you have a situation where you have free fall, you know, where you release the mass and it's free to accelerate due to uh, gravity, then it would be meters per second squared. But you know, if you're holding something in your hand, it's not accelerating. Um, but you do feel a certain gravitational field. That is the amount of force you get per unit mass. And gravitational fields apply forces to objects that have mass. So now we can apply this same idea, though, to uh, and, and create what uh, or have a concept of an electric field doing uh, exactly the same thing. So here we have an electric force, OK? And uh, what we can do is we can uh, say, well, this is equal for a two point masses. We have, um, I'll make one capital Q. Capital Q, I means that's kind of like our, the charge that of interest, OK? This, this could be you know, some object that we've charged up. And then uh, Q. I'm going to call this Q naught, and, and it's just a way of distinguishing it. This is going to be what we, we're going to call our test charge. But just think of this as two charges, OK, a certain distance apart. And it's in the r hat direction. And this was, was Coulomb's law, right? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to define the electric field. And I'm going to do it. Um, both for you know just just a regular I mean th this is just Coulomb's law right here I'm going to divide by this Q naught I'm going to divide by a test charge and so um, so let's do it so uh, we're going to say that this electric force divided by Q naught this is going to be uh, how I define my electric field it's the force per unit charge. It's it as units of newtons of force per coulomb of charge. And we're going to give it a name of E with a vector hat on it. Capital E with a vector hat. Now we used capital E before, right, for mechanical energy. But mechanical energy is a scalar. So if you see a capital E with no vector hat on it, or not in boldface in your textbook, that means uh, mechanical energy. But if you see it in this context, 
with a vector hat on it. There you go. Uh, it's uh, electric field. So the electric field is equal to um, the electric force uh, divided by a test charge. Okay, and uh, again, it has units of newtons per coulomb. Now, one of the things I like to try to beat into your heads is, you know, what is an electric field? What does it do? The electric field is um, a region of space uh, where objects that have charge feel a force. I mean, what do electric fields do? They apply forces to objects that have a net charge on them. So uh, you could have, you know, some region of space uh, where there is an electric field present. And so what you can do to figure out what the electric force is, we can say the electric force is just equal to Q naught times the electric field. So now, now all I've done is rearrange this formula. In, and this is really what you use electric fields to do, is to figure out what force is acting on an object that has charge. So you just multiply the electric field by that uh, electric charge. And you've, uh, you've got the force. All right, so um, now for a point charge, um, the electric field is equal to k q q naught over r squared divided by q naught in the r hat direction. Okay, so obviously the q naught is going to cancel out. And so for a point charge, E is equal to <coughs> k q over r squared in the r hat direction. Again, remember r hat just means away from each other. If you've got two positive charges, the electric field is, you know, is outward. If you have two charges that are opposite in, in charge, the forces are attractive. That's what the r hat means. Um, and just as Coulomb's law obeys <coughs> the superposition principle, so does the electric field. Uh, the electric field, you know, if you have, you know, a charge here, a charge here, you know, a charge here, Q1, Q2, and Q3. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my test charge at a certain location in space. And uh, let's say right here. Here's <coughs> Q0. Now Q0, can't, it, you know, it, it doesn't matter what value Q0 has, right? Because when you use it, it's going to cancel, use it with Coulomb's law, it cancels out, right? But, um, so you can make it one Coulomb or, or whatever and, and just not worry about it. But, you know, this charge, it's, it's either going to attract or repel. Let's say there, it's a positive charge that's so going to repel. Maybe Q2 is a negative charge, so it's going to be attracted. And then this, maybe this is a negative charge, so it's going to be repelled. And so, now, these are all uh, electric fields. Well, they're not really electric fields yet. But here we have the electric field due to Q1, the electric field due to Q3, so 1, 3, and the electric field due to Q2. <coughs> you figure out what those are, and you just add them up. But what do you have to add them as? You have to add them as vectors. So like, looks like uh, Q2 is all you know, in the y direction. But, you know, this is going to have an x and y component. This is going to have an x and y component. So you got to make sure you break them up into their x and y components. You add all those light components together. Of course, we have a way of saying this. The electric field is <coughs> equal to uh, the summation, where i is equal to 1 to n, where n is the number of point charges you have of uh, you know, K Q I over R I squared 
in the ri hat direction. <laughs> okay, so you have to go through uh, all of these and, and just you, you just add them up. And that's what superposition means. Um, the principle of superposition, but you, and you're going to see that a lot, superposition. It just means uh, you can uh, get the result by just adding. But remember, here you're just adding vectors. And so that, I believe, should get us through uh, this section. Okay. <clears throat>